One of the most common questions I get about my upcoming unsupported FKT attempt this coming weekend revolves around what gear I'll be taking along on my 310 mile journey. I've created a three part series where I'll be going into depth on each piece of equipment I'll be carrying on my back and wearing on my body as I attempt the fastest known time record for the Superior Hiking Trail. Each piece of gear is going to fit into one of ten categories. Backpack, shelter system, pack clothing, clothing worn, electronics, cook kit, sleeping kit, water kit, repair kit, and hygiene and first aid kit. In the first video of this three-part series, we'll be covering my backpack, cook kit, electronics, and water kit. My total base weight is 9.66 pounds, and for those unfamiliar, base weight includes items in my pack that don't fluctuate in weight over the course of my entire trip. Items that don't count towards the base weight of my backpack include food, water, fuel, certain hygiene items, and clothing and equipment worn or carried not in my backpack such as my watch and trekking poles. In a separate video, I'll be going over my food and nutrition plan for this trip. The first category is my backpack. I'm using the customized Palante V2 with lots of notable features on this pack. The V2 comes in under a pound at 14 ounces and it's available with or without a waist belt. I opted to go without it which saved me a few ounces and it's designed for the ultralight crowd who have base weights of around 10 pounds or less and overall pack weights of about 20 pounds or less and this is where it's going to ride the most comfortable and what it was designed for. Me? Well, for those that know me, they know I like to push things a little bit and I'm going to be overloading the crap out of this thing. Because my overall weight with consumables is coming in around 30 pounds, I've beefed up the shoulder pads by using Z-Pack's shoulder strap pads. These velcro right around the existing shoulder strap and provide that extra little bit of padding I'll need for the first three or four days when my pack weight is at its heaviest. The pair add just under an ounce to the overall weight of the pack. Other unique features I've added include a sewn-on clip to the left shoulder strap for my Garmin InReach satellite communicator and water bottle clips to the left and right sides of my chest strap. A small retractor on the left side of my shoulder strap keeps my knife in place and helps keep it from getting lost. This is handy as most of the food I'll be eating will be on the go. Everything needs to be super accessible, like these stretchy shoulder pockets. I don't have time to stop and grab fault weather gear from deep in my pack. The right pocket stows my two merino wool buffs and headlamp, and the left my possum down gloves and mosquito head net. Side pockets store my stove and trekking poles if they aren't needed, and a convenient bottom pouch holds my Outdoor Research Helium 2 jacket and other odds and ends. The pouch was designed as a convenient way to eat snacks and store wrappers as you hike, however I don't want the smell of food associated with my backpack, so all of my food on the go will be stored in a fanny pack made of Dyneema on my waist. The next category is my cook kit. I toyed around with the idea of going stoveless and shedding the 5.83 ounces. However, that one hot meal at the end of the day is a super big morale booster, and a stomach full of piping hot food immediately before bed is exactly what I'm going to need after 40 to 50 miles on the trail each day. My cook kit is stored inside of a Z-Pax Dyneema stuff sack in the side pouch of my backpack. The stuff sack contains everything I need to prepare a dehydrated Ziploc bag meal, minus my long-handled spoon and fuel, and weighs only 0.13 ounces. Inside the drawstring bag contains my pot, lid, stove, lighter, and food bag cozy. My pot is a modified Tokes 550 milliliter. My freezer bag meals are two cup recipes and the 550 is the perfect size. I've gotten rid of the handles and ditched the lid bringing the final weight to 2.52 ounces. The aluminum foil lid adds another 0.14 for a total of 2.66 and to put this in perspective these small modifications save me 0.87 ounces or just about the weight of my Nightcore headlamp. And when you combine all the small weight saving modifications you make throughout your entire kit, you really start to see the weight saving benefits. The stove I've chosen for this trip is the Esbit Titanium Folding Stove coming in at 0.51 ounces. The arms articulate and can be folded flat to fit inside the Tokes pot. A solid fuel tab sits securely in the center and will provide over 10 minutes of burn time, plenty to boil my two cups of water for my evening meal. A mini big lighter at 0.41 ounces will fire up the Esbit solid fuel tablets that I'll need to heat up my dinners. Eight tablets comes in at 3.94 ounces. Normally I'm using the BRS titanium stove with an isobutane canister, that combination weighing in at 7.9 ounces. The total weight on the Esbit stove with fuel is 4.41 ounces, a 3.49 ounce savings. 
To maximize fuel efficiency by blocking the wind, I'll be using a modified Tox titanium windscreen. I've trimmed the titanium foil down to 2.75 inches by 17 inches for a final weight of 0.22 ounces. This screen wraps perfectly around the pot and stove. Once the water is boiling, I'll pour it inside the freezer bag containing my meal and slide it inside my Big Sky Insulite Food Pouch Cozy. The Prima Loft insulation inside of this bag will help keep my meal nice and hot while I move on to setting up my shelter for the evening. The Big Sky Cozy comes in at 1.5 ounces. For utensils, I'll be using an Alpha C to Summit 8.5 inch hard anodized aluminum spoon with a smooth matte finish. This 0.4 ounce spoon is great for reaching deep into the bottom of those freezer bag meals. The final items in this kit are two Z-Pax Dyneema food bags and a 50 foot ball of Z-Pax Zingit line for suspending my two equally balanced bags over a limb for the evening using the counterbalance method. This keeps bears and other critters away from my food. The line comes in at 1.4 ounces and the bags each at 1.2 ounces for a total of 3.8 ounces. Next up is one of my heavier categories, electronics. And not all of this weight is factored into my base weight. Some of the items, like my watch, are considered worn equipment, like my clothing, and are typically counted towards my base weight. First up is my Garmin InReach Explorer GPS. This device packs a powerhouse of features, and for those of you who venture out alone or on big solo trips, this type of device is a must-have. An SOS feature on the side of the device can be activated in times of true emergency, and a coordinated rescue effort will soon be underway. Depending on the plan you sign up for, the device is capable of unlimited text messages to friends and family, along with super helpful weather updates tailored to the specific area you're in. While the GPS is capable of navigating you to waypoints or along routes, I'll primarily be using the device to track the established route I'll be following, in this case, the Superior Hiking Trail. Every 10 minutes, the device will plot a point on a map indicating my location. By following the link below, you can track my progress starting this coming Sunday, the 16th of September. Unfortunately, Garmin came out with a weight savings mini version of this device shortly after I purchased this one. The InReach Explorer sets me back almost half a pound at 7.5 ounces. However, this is one of the most indispensable pieces of equipment I'll be carrying and the one that will verify my unsupported attempt if I'm successful. Another invaluable piece of kit I'll have is my iPhone 7 Plus. Not only does it obviously function as a phone when I have service, but the device will also serve as my camera, video camera for vlogging my attempt, my morning alarm clock, and is loaded with tons of customized trail maps that I've created and data that I'll need to navigate along the way. To save on the battery life, I'll be putting it in airplane mode for the duration of the trip and turning the screen brightness to a lower setting. The phone with case comes in at 8.8 .8 ounces with another .5 for the charging and headphone adapters. I've got a pretty aggressive schedule plan and because of this I'll be doing a fair bit of night hiking, both in the early morning hours and in the evening. The Nightcore NU25 has become my go-to choice for a super reliable, lightweight headlamp. It's USB rechargeable, waterproof, and comes in just a hair under an ounce. At the high setting the headlamp will burn for 5 continuous hours at 190 lumens, perfect for what I need. It's got four light settings from low to turbo and two additional red lamp settings. In times of emergency, it also features an SOS mode. As you can imagine, 16 hours on trail every day gets to be pretty monotonous and you've got to have something to occupy your mind and motivate you to push big miles. For this, I turn to my Scandis Sport Player with Bose headphones. At only an ounce, I've got access to 100 gigs of music, podcasts, and audiobooks for 25 hours on a full USB charge. This player is way more battery efficient than my iPhone and paired with my Bose headphones, I've got a winning combination to keep my head in the game. The Bose headphones have a great microphone as well and will be used as I vlog along the trail. The headphones come in at one ounce as well. On my wrist is a device that I've come to love and will never leave home without. My Soon 2 Ambit 3 Peak is packed with awesome features for backpacking. Bluetooth connectivity with my phone, altitude, GPS, barometer, 3D mapping, compass, speed, pace, distance, weather, and continuous heart rate monitoring are some of the features that I'll be using to track my progress as I make my way from Canada to Wisconsin. The two features I use most on this watch are distance and pace. I'll need to keep my average pace for this trip right around 3 miles per hour and the Ambit 3 will help keep me on track. It's also nice to know how far I've come at a glance, rather than to judge my distance by physical features in the landscape as I pass them. This tends to be a huge motivator for Trips and I when we hike. No more, well, I think we're just about there. We know exactly how far we've come and how far we have yet to travel. 
The watch is considered worn weight because it's on my wrist and comes in at 3.06 ounces. It'll need to be charged once a day using the USB cable, which adds another 1.4 ounces. Of course, all this techno wizardry needs to be charged up, and for that, I turn to the Anchor brand of battery banks. The PowerCore 20,100 milliamp has Qualcomm quick charge capabilities and allows me to charge multiple devices at a time. This powerhouse will charge my iPhone 7 Plus up to seven times, and I'll need this amount of power as I have five separate devices to charge. My Garmin GPS, GPS watch, headlamp, MP3 player, and phone. Unfortunately, all of this power comes at a price. The charging bank with two 12-inch anchor charging cords comes in at 13.48 ounces. Because I'll be vlogging my journey, I've got to have something to hold and stabilize my camera as I do my walk and talks. For this, I've turned to the Pedco UltraPod 1. For most shots, the UltraPod and associated camera mount will be secured to my trekking pole. Simply slide the camera onto the mount, hold the trekking pole up at the desired height, walk, and talk. Because of my time constraints, I won't be doing any walk-away shots or creative camera angles showing me sauntering through the woods or peering off some scenic vista. Nope. This isn't a normal backpacking trip where I get to soak in the sights. I'll be constantly moving, and because of this, a secure camera mount on my trekking pole is a necessity. The next category is my water kit, which includes a dirty water bag, two water bottles with drink tubes, a pre-screen, and a water filter. The entire kit comes in at 8.56 ounces, obviously empty without the water. My water filtration needs to be fast and on the go, and for that, I've turned to the HydroPack 2-liter water bag. The 42 millimeter opening is large and allows me to quickly scoop up water at a source before filtering and transferring it to clean bottles. It's made from a thermoplastic polyurethane and is completely BPA and PVC free. The seams on this are TPU and RF Weldon and are pretty darn tough. I've been using the HydroPack water bags for a few years now with zero problems. I've heard some complaints of the bags transferring an unpleasant odor over time, but I've never experienced this as I'm just using them as dirty bags and transferring the water rather quickly. Prior to inserting the actual membrane water filter, I use a homemade screen filter to remove as much debris from the water as possible. I picked up a bit of fine mesh from my local Walmart, cut a circle out of the top of the 42mm HydroPack cap, and glued the mesh in place with some AquaSeal waterproof adhesive. The result? A filter that doesn't need to be swished or back flushed as often. This is an important time saver because every moment counts. Once the bag is filled, I simply switch out the mesh screen for the Catadyne B-Free water filter. This bad boy weighs almost half as much as the Sawyer Squeeze, and when brand new, this thing flows like crazy. I even decreased the weight by removing this unnecessary blue ring around the top. I purchased a brand new one for the trip, about 25 bucks on Amazon, and I put the date on the top ring so I don't mix it up with the older ones. Once the filter's in, I gotta have something to transfer the clean water to, and for this, I'm using the standard 750 milliliter smart water bottle. I've replaced the sports top with a modified source convert tube water bottle kit, and the beautiful thing about this system, I don't have to remove the water bottle to drink and I can see exactly what I've got left in my bottle. It's attached to a modified Bison brand water bottle carrier and I've installed a quick release plastic buckle in place of the heavier carabiner that the Bison comes with. This makes removing and installing the bottle to my backpack a breeze and positions it perfectly on my backpack harness. Well, that's it kids for the first installment in my three-part What's in My Pack series for my Superior Hiking Trail FKT attempt. Remember, this stuff works for me. It may not necessarily work for you. So do your research, get out there, and have your own adventure. Questions? Drop them in the comments below. Hey, thanks for watching and supporting this crazy dream of mine. Like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you out on the trail.